Hi all, today we're talking about one of the more important systems of oppression, which is how uh, oppression will impact and accumulate over generations. You um, can look at your social location map, and whenever there's a baby symbol, I'm talking about oppressions that can have an impact that builds up over a few generations. So there's quite a few different oppressions that fit into this category. I'm going to use the example of racism and classism today, uh, but this applies to other ones as well. You watch the video with the comedian who's talking about why a black joke is very different than a white joke. And pretty much it sums up into because of history. Because history went one way and not the other. Folks tend to talk about this notion of reverse racism or reverse oppression when they're pretty much ignoring the history that came before and all the structures that are built up to support one group and not the other one. They create a kind of a false equivalency. So you had this cartoon that you worked with for today in which we're talking about how history can impact um, outcomes today. If we were to only look at this one panel, the last panel, in which this guy is saying, hey, I need a hand up. The other guy is saying, no, I could never give you a hand up. That would be reverse racism. If we were to only look at this panel, we could say, this guy's kind of a moocher. He's asking for help when he doesn't deserve it. And this guy got up here with no help. If we were to erase history, we could think that this makes sense, but it doesn't make sense when we take into account the entire history of how that guy got up there. It's really important to note that he didn't get up there by himself, he had a whole boost up. And this is what we're talking about when it comes to uh, structures in history and accumulation, is that the people who are up at the top didn't get up there by themselves, they got up there by squishing somebody else and getting a boost up. Something else that I really like about that cartoon is this panel here. I call it the apology panel, where this guy says, oh my god, I'm really sorry. I can't believe I've done that. That's terrible. I won't be doing that anymore. The thing about it is, is that if one family has been stealing from this other family for, let's call it 20 years, when you realize, oh my god, I've been stealing, you should probably pay that money back. But this panel, pretty much what it does is says, oh no, I realize I've been stealing. I won't be stealing anymore. From now on, we'll play fair, which means we'll play equal. I won't steal from you. You won't steal from me. I'm not paying the money back, though. I'm going to keep what I have, and you keep what you have. And from now on, no more stealing. Now we'll play fair and play equal. And we can really understand how that doesn't make any sense, is you've got a hand up, you've got something that you didn't actually earn that you took from me, it's time to pay it back before we can get into this notion of playing fair. After that, we'll talk about it. Something to think about in terms of how stuff accumulates is we're going to get into this example of the million dollars from the bank, and that's when we're getting into classism, less so racism. Um, if we were to think about all the things that this person accumulated over the 40 years of using this money, we want to talk about all kinds of boosts. It wasn't just the economic boost, and that's what I'm trying to get at when I say, what if you pay it back? What if you pay back the million dollars? So if somebody came to you today and said, hey, I'll give you a million dollar loan, but in 40 years you got to pay me back with interest. Most of us would probably take it, because we know that even having that money sitting in a bank account would make enough money for you to live off of for the rest of your life without working. So you could just let it sit and then pay it back. Um, even if you cleared out your bank account, everything in 40 years, we got to think about all the stuff that you gained in that 40 years, including your network is doing really well, so your kids are doing fine. Even if you wake up tomorrow without a dime to your name, you can probably go stay with your kids. I bet you they have a spare room. Um, they will probably have enough money to even spare you some food for a while, and they'll maybe even have a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars for you to get on your feet. So you have people you can tap into. That's a giant source of wealth. You also have your resume. You've built up a resume. Um, you people will be more likely to hire you. You've built up um, your what's it called? Uh, your credit history. So banks will be a lot more likely to loan you money. Also, you have the experience of having run a business before. People will be much more likely to trust you in the future. You also know a lot of people who are in hiring, so you may know somebody who can put you in touch with a job. Uh, you have a lot of intangibles that stay with you, even if you give up all of your money in your business. 
So there's no way that you can actually pay this back and put it back as if it had never been. You will always benefit from that boost that you got that was unfair. If we're thinking about um, this notion of accumulation and inheritance and generations, we want to think about how long that one-time boost would last. So let's say you got that million dollars. Your kids are doing pretty well. We know that. Your grandkids are likely to be doing well. Your great-grandkids are probably also going to be feeling the impact of this one-time boost. So that one-time boost could stay with you for a good long while. If we think about all the mechanisms by which having money makes it easier to save money and to make money, we could think about all the discounts that people with money get. Like, for example, um, I get a discount on paying my car insurance ahead of time. So if I can pay six months ahead, I'll get maybe a $100 break. That's $100 that other folks don't get to have. Or, for example, getting to buy goods that are more durable. They're not going to break down. So instead of spending $40 every six months on a new pair of shoes that breaks down, you could pay $150 on a more long-lasting pair of shoes that's going to last you um, quite a few more years. Um, likewise, um, for example, uh, if you have good credit history, so if you have money, um, you will have a lower rate on your credit card. Uh, interest rate. So the same purchase will cost you less. Or um, my bank, for example, gives you a break on your um, week. I'm sorry, on your monthly bank fees, if you have a certain minimum, fifteen hundred dollars sitting in a bank account. So if you have money, there's all these little ways that you can save money. Like for example, buying in bulk, you can afford to sink fifty dollars into tuna and have it sitting there for the next six months because you're not that tight on the fifty dollars. Whereas if you're trying to make an ends meet constantly, you can't get that bulk discount. There's a lot of ways that things accumulate within a lifetime and across generations. We could try to do a little bit of a flip and say, if one time boost will last you quite a few generations, how 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 much would it hurt you to have a one time setback? So the concept of redlining is a practice that was put into place in many U.S. cities, um, even through the 1950s. So I pulled a quote from 1947 in Portland in which uh, the bankers are outright stating that they want to keep uh, neighborhoods racially segregated. That is, they will not lend money to black people if they're buying outside of the black neighborhood. They cannot buy a house, for example, in Laurelhurst or Irving Irvington. So even if your grandfather had the money to buy the house, he was not allowed to buy in that property. I'm sorry, in that neighborhood, including uh, the real estate agents had a code, uh, whereas they would lose their license if they sold to a person of color in the white neighborhood. So even if your grandfather had the money to buy that house, he couldn't do it because of the skin tone. So if we were to think about a one-time boost, if you look back and imagine in 1955, your grandfather bought a house in Irvington or Laurelhurst. Those are nice neighborhoods. Those houses have appreciated quite a bit. We could imagine how that could still be helping you out today. Likewise, it could still be hurting you today. And if we think of networks as an incredible source of wealth, we got to think about what it means to have your network being chronically in crisis. So in the million dollar scenario, we thought of this person going to knock on their kid's door and staying in their guest room for a while. That's a network with a lot of support. We could even say that, you know, there could be a network that can't support you. Like you have an emergency and your parents love you, but they say, we love you, honey, but we just don't have any money to help you out. That could be a neutral network. But then there's the networks that are chronically in crisis, and this is where we're getting into the poverty scenario, is when your people are constantly hurting, they will need to come to you for help. It's not just that they don't support you, it's that they will need to knock on your door and say, oh my God, I need $500 or the car is going to get repossessed, and then I'm going to lose my job because I can't get there. At this point, you have folks who are not boosting you, but are actually creating a pull where you need to be supporting them. So we want to think of all of the mechanisms that either help you out or pull you down. And these have nothing to do with the decisions that you're made or who you are or whether you went to school or not. This have a lot more to do with the structures that are built around you. We tend to think of reverse racism as just this notion of the joke that was made or um, having a personal interaction. And we tend to ignore the structures that are built in to either help or hurt us. This is what we're getting at with this cartoon 
is recognizing that there's a long history and a long set of structures that are helping or hurting you.